the best trade right now is, is moving into volatility trades. Part of pricing in a bullish market is the headlines. $100 oil, $150 oil. Yeah. So get ready for some volatility because it's at the extremes of this positioning and everyone's riling everyone up. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of World of Oil Derivatives. I'm Greg Newman, the Chief Executive of Onyx Capital Group, and I'm joined with uh, the research team, Audrey, Vincent, and Martha. So just a quick note, we've seen some great uh, following of the podcast, which is really, really nice to see. Uh, what we'd ask though, is that more of you um, click the subscribe button on YouTube or Spotify or um, Apple Podcasts. It helps us know, you know you're listening or what, what went well, what didn't in the episode. And of course, any comments and feedback is very useful too. Uh, the team's been going to Switzerland and other places and um, asking for feedback and it's it's uh it's great to see as we say there's, there's uh, more and more listeners out there so please keep that up and, and let us know what you think so right to dive right into it audrey what's been going on in outright prices yeah so in in both crew contracts last week the end of the week saw you know prices coming off uh for the first time so we had three weeks of gains and then prices came off and now the narrative all over the news is oh it's this the interest rate hike so i think maybe not last week's podcast, you the podcast say before the headline that. headline to, to be aware of is the Fed. It's the Fed interest yeah. rate hikes. And I thought it'd be really interesting to see how the market reacted yeah. on the back of that. That, you know, if they didn't hike interest rates and that if prices came off, there's something quite interesting happening. Mm. Um, and now the narrative is, you know, it's all over, you know, the news channels. It's, oh, everyone's really afraid of more interest rate hikes, which is what they said. That's what the Fed has come out and said. They're, they're going to maintain them at like high levels for longer as long as they need to. Mm. Um, so kind of, Breaking that down a little bit more, we obviously had the CFTC data then coming out Friday, so we kind of had a look at that yesterday. And it's interesting to see, you know, we're still seeing length being added to WTI futures and to Brent futures. But on the money managers. On the managed money, so the spec positions we're looking at. So the mm. spec positions, we're still seeing, you know, the increase in length, but it's slowing a bit. And, you know, when you look at levels now, you can see, you know, WTI, the speculative length in WTI is at the highest level since February 2022. So, you know, maybe we're starting to hit this kind of oversaturation on the long side, which does explain in some ways why prices, you know, because that wasn't necessarily bearish news they paused interest rate hikes like everybody was expecting so why the big come off in prices and then same in brent so we're seeing brent is the length and speculative brent positions they're at the the highest level since you know uh, march of this year so what we could be seeing is you know it's just kind of everyone that has bought or could or wants to buy wants to be long has already done that now um and that you know this this interest rate headline is kind of almost like an excuse to take profit yeah. before scaling back into a long yeah, position no, I, I think that's great because you just got it every time you mention the spec positions obviously the spec in all the categories right yeah i get what you're saying because it's an, a reaction to interest rate and actually interest rate rises or threat of them has actually caused more buying in the money managers on a net basis mm -hmm. which you expect them to be most sensitive well, to this, interest well, rates. See, the data is so lagged. So all this buying yeah. was pre this interest rate hike. Okay, well, there you go. So yeah, probably exactly. you're saying it's pretty likely that, that next week we're going to see this. It's, yeah, okay. exactly. Because if it was the former, as in if it was a continuation of what yep. you've seen, then I guess what we'd be kind of surmising is that the trade houses and majors who I think were the early ones into this, this recent rally, right, mm -hmm. from the kind of mid 80s up, um, that was a very fundamentally physically signal based rally, yep. I think. And uh, the trade houses and majors got on that first and the money managers kind of caught up. And I think um, what I was going to say is it may look like actually 95 is a good level to see, you know, materialize what was expected. Yeah. And all the fears from last year that the market has a problem. Well, it's hard to follow through beyond 100. Yeah. But then that's just a story. Whereas yours is actually, well, if if we see the evidence this Friday, this Friday, it yes, probably yeah. was or could yeah. likely be These a reaction to the interest rates from the money managers. Yeah. And maybe people are still in the trade. At least when you were just in Switzerland, speaking to a lot of physical traders, trade houses. Mm -hmm. Did you get the sense that people are still bullish? Yeah, or? definitely. I mean, and fundamentally it makes sense to be, I mean, really. Which is 99% of those traders, if it, the physical looks good, they will buy yeah. that price. I mean, that's how they work, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you look at any of the fundamentals, we were speaking about this in the last podcast, there's nothing really bearish. I mean, even the interest rate, the polls and in interest rate, that's not bearish. Only the comments are bearish. And I think, so we see this oversaturation, you know, in both TI and Brent up until last Tuesday's data. Obviously, headline comes out Wednesday and we see prices coming off since then. Um, 
So I think that's what we're going to see coming out in next week's data is we're going to see these guys likely taking profit at those levels and probably scaling back in. Mm-hmm. I think you had, um, we mentioned, was it, is it JP Morgan has come out? So they're predicting a surge in Brent oil prices up to $150 per barrel, which is... Well, it's just a repeat of the same thing. The same thing as last year. Yeah. So you get the clickbait and I, I, it makes complete sense, right? Yeah. You, you need to be relevant. You need to get clients calling you and saying, what, what's going on? And then you can trade. And it's, it's all the same stuff, right? The same cycle. So yeah. we've also mentioned that on the podcast a few weeks back about, you know, the momentum is one thing, then you get the saturation and mm-hmm. then everyone's in the trade or a lot of people are in the trade and then they need to be talking up the market, right? I mean, everyone yeah. wants to support their position. So I think it's very unlikely the slower moving, let's say long-term positioning trade houses and majors are going to be taking profit at this mm-hmm. level. So as you say, I think it's very likely to be money managers from what you said. Yeah. The only thing I would counter is um, you're saying it's not very, there's nothing bearish on the physical side. Um, reading this morning about diesel, I mean, it's had a pretty serious, do you want to talk about that, Martha? Yeah, Yeah, of course. So we've seen this kind of gas oil rally over the past um, few weeks and kind of thought it was going to be over. And then the Russians came out last week and said there's going to be this ban on everything, deliberately keeping it as vague as possible, Mm -hmm. timeline completely vague. And then flat prices reaching up to a $1,000 metric ton and crack swapped and near 40. And... um, since then it's kind of died down a bit it has like corrected down it didn't break a thousand and since then they have come out and said that it's not going to include gas oil it's just going to be um what is it gasoline diesel so the heavy bunker fuels and the high sulfur diesel but Europe still has a ban on Russian diesel products anyway. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this was very much a, a sentiment driven thing. Well, there's not supposed no, to be. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Like the stocks are still low. They're still the same. Fu- yes, yeah, so it's not really a fundamental thing. We think the gas old sell off was just a sell the news type situation. Like who should like if you're to look at like a country that should affect it's Turkey because they can still import. Whereas like the EU shouldn't be importing any of this yeah. anyway. Okay. So them banning it or not in, you know, in theory should be kind of irrelevant um but i mean we were discussing this as well in the last podcast is this is going to be the first winter without these russian diesel flows and obviously you know a headline like this comes out even though it's not actually going to make a material difference right now because we're not supposed to be importing but people you know panic ball cracks do they break through the 40 dollar per barrel in the front no almost 90 39 39, yeah. yeah very very close very close but i think you know we were also looking at, you know, the CFTC on this. We we're doing some analysis, like open interest and stuff. It's very risk off at the moment. I don't think this market knows what to do. And on even, gas on? Yeah. I think that's that's actually quite smart, though, because the underlying yeah. market is strong on a macro basis, physical macro in the sense of like yeah. everything in oil is, is tightened up. Then why just buy crude? Yeah. And the momentum's there anyway. The spreads are performing. Flat price is performing. It seems like the best place. Why would you go into products yeah. and then risk having a differential too crude? Yeah. So what you know, it's already been very strong in the last few months. You know, don't tempt fate, right? It's better yeah. to hold hold it in th- something that is undeniably um, strengthening. Um, having said that, I would add that there was a bit of bit of volatility coming into the data Brent market. So again, this is what we've been talking about um, on the last data Brent report we do. Um, it was essentially saying that there's decent momentum. And uh, what you need, what you tend to see is while the market is unsaturated, it kind of being quite smooth mm. and it's been a smooth rally. And then all of a sudden you got some shock volatility in the very prompt. So a cargoes, well, a cargo or cargoes were offered down very aggressively, taking the physical diff from, you know, triple figures down to like mid fifties, which is a tough thing about backwardation because backwardation at plus 50 and backwardation at plus a dollar there's no, it's quite hard to tell what the difference is. It's still mm-hmm. a very strong market. It's right. just a relative thing, mm-hmm. but it's still undeniably like, you know, people didn't want the cargo at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So that is a bearish thing. And it was a bit of a shock, but then that's what, that's what you can kind of expect at the upper end of a bullish rally yeah. is volatility. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we were talking about that with options, right? The best trade right now, well, was buying vanilla flat price, buying vanilla spreads and just riding the momentum. Mm-hmm. But as you get towards saturation, it's probably going to be, much more volatile sorry we were talking about this yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um ultimately i think uh if we expect volatility to be kind of bullish you can kind of have a bullish bias with uh, call options or something like that because you should get the benefit from from volatility and i think the data brent market is kind of hinting towards that mm-hmm. but is there anything else uh, with respect to data brent and brent spread something interesting i was noticing was okay last week you mentioned that the forward curve was pretty uniform wasn't uh, any kinks in the curve showing that it was a fully 
bullish regime, but then that provides op opportunities for traders in the market as well. So there was a uh, there was more physical cargo offers, and the stiff was pushed down. Mm. Uh, I think two to six opts uh, CFD was that week was pretty um, pretty bearish as well. Mm -hmm. So sort of had a it was a bit of like a bearish uh, bearish part of the CFD forward curve. Mm -hmm. So there's that. But then also I was seeing looking at although the Brent spreads rally. In, in the front, Novdeck has sort of reached a plateau around a dollar ten, a dollar twenty. The the flies in the back end has still been surging higher. So, mm. deck twenty three, June twenty four, deck twenty four. That's reached uh, surpassed three dollars on Monday, and it was just two dollars this time last week as well. So I'm seeing like at the back end, there's more um, traders are expressing their view that you know like crude's going to be might be pretty tight in the in the deferred. So I'm seeing like there's still there's still a rally going on, but you need to look beyond the flat price. Yeah, it's, that's a great point. I think uh, the deck June deck and mm -hmm. you know deck deck spreads these are kind of favoured, well particularly the long dated flies, kind of favoured as a flat price view with lower volatility. Yeah, and it tends to be smoother smoother rallies because as you say that you know, the underlying North Sea spreads, um, but because they're not prompt, you don't get the same volatility. Yeah. Um, but at the same time you know, it's more likely or more, it's easier to get things under and overpriced in the deferred market because it is 100% flow driven, right? It's just buying and selling. There's no physical attached to it whatsoever. So I think, um, I, I hear what you're saying. It's a sign that the momentum's still going. There's still <coughs> buying flows coming in. Mm -hmm. But I think North Sea traders in particular will start to, they, they want to they catch the range, right? So as in, they were buying it undervalued and now they're probably looking at it saying, well, we're we're looking at the prompt market right now, and expiries, and what data, and how how the Brent spreads go from expiry, expiring at a physical diff, which is the time spread, mm -hmm. and then how that then follows through into data Brent pricing, and that will give you an indication if the levels can hold. Mm -hmm. So if it's one dollar forty, and that that clears as a physical diff as a time spread, let's say for November loading and expiry. Mm -hmm. If those November cargoes then expire at one dollar forty, they actually do materialize and clear at one dollar forty to refiners. Then that's obviously going to give a lot of confidence that one dollar forty is a fair price, yeah. and it could even go higher. But as I'm saying, the volatility's come in now, and we dip down to fifty, mm -hmm. and uh, quite aggressively. Mm -hmm. And now we're looking at the forward curve in the next few weeks, and it's around you know seventy eighty cents. Mm -hmm. So the market is testing whether even in this bullish environment. We may be a bit too high mm -hmm. and then you can then look at something deferred and if they think look it doesn't matter how bullish we think the market is right now you know it's not over the top it's it's kind of in its fair range then you look at what's overvalued and what's overvalued is maybe what you're saying is the kind of deck june deck stuff that mm -hmm. kind of that that would be it that's an interesting thing to look at basically is yeah sort of it's just seeing like even though looking at the front spreads the flat price everything else including refined products the bullish momentum has really subsided but looking at the flight it's still it's in, still yeah. surging so yeah. do you know what else i'd say about that is um it's not going to be retail traders and investors trading those those flies yeah so that's going to be trade houses and majors right 100 like yeah. so it's kind of a good indication that there is a long-term bullish view seeping in it's basically what you're saying and right they still believe this market's got a lot to go mm -hmm. um so anyway interesting what about products, uh, Martha? Yeah, so the products this week, in terms of refinery margins, we've seen some pretty heavy pressure in the front. So we've got October refinery margin down over $2.50. And the biggest driver you can see here is the um, EBOB, the European gasoline, which has seen a real, like the bottom's just fallen out this week. Mm. This is Monday to Monday, by the way, 18th to the 25th. Um, and it's been yeah huge pressure scene. We've seen like our Bob weakening on screen, our Bob selling, which has just led to like this really like loss of confidence in eBob and mm. even some like our buying in the back and everything's just kind of like the bottom's fallen out. Cool. And the the outright levels? Yes, yeah, so the outright levels in the eBob crack. Yeah. So in October at thirteen forty four. Okay. Um, down from so yesterday it dropped, I think seven point seven percent in three hours. From the like the main price, so it was like a heavy drop yesterday afternoon. Um, yeah, and no really headlines or no. I mean, we had the news about the um, Russian gasoline, but I don't see how that would be bearish European gasoline. There hasn't been any like refinery news or headlines like that. I think it just seems like complete financial flows. Mm -hmm. And do we have evidence that uh, people were selling Ebo crack and getting out of it? Like it was quite a long market. We were saying it's balanced on a crack basis right now in October, and November. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, that's quite interesting. I mean, it's lagged by two days, which is, you know, obviously something to take into consideration. Yeah. That maybe we'll see this happening this week in particular. Mm. Um, mm. So we'll find out tomorrow, essentially, through our own data, yeah. if that selling, was it yesterday, did you say, Martha? Yeah, yeah. heavy press yesterday. If that has kind of cleaned out some longs or even some new shorts entering uh, on EBOB. So, you know, yeah. that had been a um, pretty significant driver. Mm. Just with our own data, we had almost 500,000 barrels sold to us on the 21st and then more selling, net selling, this is like another 50,000 on the 22nd. So like there is heavy selling in the market right now. I think um, uh, it was mentioned before um, f of the physical market and gasoline, the physical EBOB, that has been quite weak. The barges since mm. two weeks ago have mm. been trading, have been pricing very, um, very weakly and then so it seems like as of the paper has a correct downwards in yeah. line with the physical, but also seeing the later CFTC data, seeing a lot of money managers are adding uh, short positions onto RBOB futures. And that's actually the highest level it's been for over two years. So it does seem like the bullish sentiment is very much coming to an end. I'm are, you, are, you, are you basing this on the physical differentials and premiums or the crack basis or? On everything really. Yeah. So I was going to say, like, the margins weakening would make sense with rallying crude, right? And ultimately, as as with the physical diffs in the front, we've kind of just obviously reached a point where the, it's high enough that maybe you're getting a bit of demand destruction and you're getting enough of a, you know, priced in point mm -hmm. whereby um, the margins have been quite high for quite some time. And it's logical that they would start to weaken the higher flat price you go. Um, but then again, you're saying that generally that the whole gasoline market from a physical premium sense all kind of weakened yeah so that yeah. would give the indication that actually it's just genuine underlying weakness um which i guess you know we're not going to make any calls on this whether it's supply or demand but mm -hmm. i would i would think that being such a high price so quickly you know ten dollar per barrel difference and then obviously the crack as well in the last couple of months in gasoline it probably is something to do with you know pretty serious rising price at the pump and yeah mm -hmm. Uh, I guess yeah. flights as well are going to be the same. It's going to be a case of, you know, when flight prices are going to get too high, that's going to start causing demand destruction. Because yeah. America is quite strong right now that like you were looking at regrade last week, Vincent, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. So that was actually a trade idea we put up for mm -hmm. um, Onyx Alpha, our trade ideas report. So it's going bullish in the Novdic um, regrade role. So that, of course, did not, uh, not actually work out because of um well regrade came off gas all sort of saw a rally as well um at the time you know we we're looking at a bit of both technical and fundamental indicators mm. technically it's the rsi was in the oversold region i'm um, looking at the ppo there seems to be a reversal of momentum um at the same time open interest above average and it seems like looking at the mo on a momentum basis the shorts the, the bearish uh, trend was sort of uh, coming to come to an end. You know, there was sort of flatlining. There was a bit this of- This is in the out, outright regrade or the roll? Uh, both. Yeah, okay. Both. And then fundamentally, it seemed that one at the time, you know, it was, um, uh, I was hearing that because of LNG strikes in Australia, uh, which has ended now. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it was, uh, they were saying like South Korea might be looking to stock up with uh, kerosene instead mm -hmm. instead of um, LNG for winter mm -hmm. for winter, winter stockpiling but also the fact that you know the R between South Korea and the US West Coast for uh, jet fuel was still open and as well as mm -hmm. the fact that refin refineries might be prioritizing production of more gas oil over kerosene yeah. which would therefore you know sort of uh, be bullish for the uh, regrade differential yeah so all of these factors would have been um, that was my justification of a bullish trade but clearly at these outright levels um, did not uh, go to fruition. So yeah. what happened? Um, well, it just uh, just came off this week. Like we, tanked or just it leveled? Just, just came off. <laughs> just, just did. Well, from the price targets we suggested, yeah. the trade stopped out. Okay. Uh, unfortunately. Is it still trading lower though? Uh, it's so like minus just, 260 in the prompt regrade. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, can, I can see the logic in that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, okay. but again, like, you know, it's just, it's ultimately the prevailing sentiment of the traders because it's a deferred contract. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, um, yeah, maybe it's led by the gas or strength more than the jet weakness. Although mm -hmm. there's, you know, any number of reasons why 
it might you know seasonal seasonal basis that maybe jet uh people are kind of weak on the sentiment or maybe there's been decent refinery hedging i mean you just need to look deeper into it but ultimately mm -hmm. um one thing i did read was quite interesting was it's the best time to buy flights is the first i think end of basically this week so the last week of september first week of october i did this last week so i going home for christmas i was looking at flights in august and yeah. people i was irish people i was talking to were stressing me out i went online and flights with 300 return to ireland which is an hour flight away and mm. i can get any airport as well like most airports go to ireland um i went on a week later so like last week or mm. yeah beginning and i got them for 35. wow mad though isn't it Crazy. well yeah but i mean it's obviously it's dynamic pricing at the end of the day so yeah. uh the demand is just clearly not there and but and, you've got to take brent into consideration yeah, here now yeah, too yeah. like i mean this is obviously i mean there was a there was an article came out today i think if you can actually bring this up it was in the financial times they actually even like touched on this a bit today so will the oil price rally I mean even higher airfares and this is going to be interesting to see you know at what level will it just create a demand destruction so obviously now all the airlines you know when they're doing their hedging have to take into account that you know crude oil at the time when i'm sure when they were looking at this was around 95 dollars a barrel nearly touched mm. 96 last week it's still you know over 91 in the deck contract right now yeah um and now obviously this is going to start having to be reflected in in you know ticket sales obviously the the consideration of there is less actual planes available since the pandemic less um, pilots as well less pilots mm -hmm. so you know the flight maybe less are, of that pent-up demand we had post-covid that's that can't be an excuse anymore dying out now isn't mm. it as well and then you've got people like for example last christmas so people that hadn't been home in like two years mm. and they use christmas you know the kind of winter as an excuse to go home and see their families you know they've done that last year if flights are going to cost you you know three four hundred you know pound return um you know it's gonna it's just i'll catch you in february i'll catch you in march i don't need to go home for christmas mm, yeah. um if we're going to have these re and it, this is all like a brent driven thing mm. um yeah and there's, there's obviously a clear sensitivity around 100 dollars per barrel and like maybe let's call it 120 on the products yeah um and and it's very real and maybe our, yeah to some extent the world was getting used to lower prices and that's come back up again mm. and i don't know maybe there's just a resistance i don't i don't know but it's it's uh i see exactly what you're saying it's uh it's a good testing time now so what would you say from a trade trade perspective then anyone got any trade ideas going forward i think next week's going to be interesting for trades and probably east west because you've got china's golden week holiday okay um mm. remember last time what was the most recent sing holiday that we had um, I mean, you, you had traders out of APEC and we saw the Brent Dubai yeah, yeah. doing mad things. Early there was September, yeah. Early September then. Mm. I mean, also the, was there an earlier holiday than that? Holiday because you, you had the fuel East West just absolutely tanked. Mm. And it was just because of lack of liquidity. And obviously when all those Asian players returned, that came up again. I see what you mean, yeah. So, so do we have a sense like a of the- Like a short term trade. Have Chinese been buying or selling East West? We've got the counterparty data, right? Um, they were, well, on the East West, it's been buying buying interest. Okay, so if that, um, if that disappears, like you say, next week, it yeah. could be a liquidity drought, we could get a decent sell-off. Yeah. And that's across East West on what, fuel, NAFA? That was, I was looking at the 380, so that was fuel oil, but okay. I, I wonder what, like, gasoline, I, you were speaking to the traders last week in gasoline, what was their kind of sentiment? I think gasoline, it's also weak sentiment in uh, RON92 as well, so uh, MOC became offered as well as, like, selling in 92 spreads as well. So it seems like actually comparing uh, the Americas, Europe and Asia, actually Europe seems to be doing the best on a relative value basis. Mm. Seeing like the East West tanking, the Arb still tanking as well. So yeah, so it's seemingly like gasoline's just seeing a big correction. Also from a dashboard seems like people were very much in the money. Uh, the longs were in the money for 92 cracks over the year. Now with outright cracks coming off, they're now out of the money. So mm. potentially some profit taking flow some stop outs as well you know so it's just weak sentiment all around so you're making a call for selling sing versus europe refinery margins uh when i'm not making any calls <laughs> <laughs> but i think it's an interesting point actually and uh, if you're a day trader in particular you know the liquidity spikes and droughts are what you're looking for yeah and i think um moments like this we know the extreme vulnerabilities in liquidity droughts is things like the taz going when wti went negative Mm -hmm. It's a perfect illustration of what can happen with liquidity drought. Yep. So um, I absolutely see your point. So, uh, but you don't want to come up with a specific trade idea. Well, I mean, if they've been buying the East, the 380 East West and if they go missing, but the only thing is I think Europe is quite saturated on the long side. So on the back of that, I wouldn't necessarily be yeah. bearish well, That's a relative value thing, right? As you say, but anyway, that's, that's yeah. interesting. But there's no, Martha got anything? 
I know that Vincent and I were both looking at the Naphtha East-West earlier, um, looking at kind of how the impact of the Russian, well, partly the impact of the Russian gasoline movement will like impact the demand for Naphtha coming out of Asia. Mm -hmm. And also um, the like technical indicators for that, we're looking over the ball, it's above the upper Bollinger Bands. And um, we're looking at some, that looks like day on day, looking at the Onyx like dashboard, we can see a build up in kind of selling here. So. That's what okay. we're looking at. I think yeah. we're saying sell not freeze west next week. Yeah. I think that's what, what we're saying. What about the uh, WTI Brent, um, yeah. WTI Brent spread? Because it's um, around like minus 260 to 250. It's very much overbought. So like WTI is on a flat, pri flat price basis supported above $90. But also like US exports are like pretty, pretty insane right now. It's so to speak. So I'm wondering. Yeah, if, this was getting headlines, yeah. right? I mean, um, mm. there's mm. some very aggressive fixtures, you know, the forcing kind of the oil out of um, yeah. as fast as they can, which has been happening, generally speaking, over the last you know few years. But I think it got a particular spike. And then, of course, the SPR being low. And I think it's a, you know, it's quite opportunistic from the trade houses, right? At the end of the day, they know that the market can't really sustain um, the levels that they've got right now. And uh, meanwhile, the exports are ramping up and there's demand for it in Europe. So it makes complete sense to be long um, WTI Houston at least versus dated. And then that feeds into WTI Brent. So I think it's logical why we've got such um, upward pressure in the WTI contract. It is a physically delivered contract at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot of meaning, like hedgeable meaning now, uh, now that WTI Houston, uh, sorry, Midland price is um, in part Brent. So uh, I would say that's that'd be a dangerous sell. But I think what you can look at is um, if it's concentrated to the prompt and you think that the recent move has been exacerbated on the WTI expiry, which was all the talk, right? That you're yeah. taking out barrels uh, right. just before expiry, um, exporting everything. That's that's um, You can let that happen, of course, and the market can be dragged up. But what tends to happen is this is the beauty of the forward curve or people don't like about the forward curve, but what creates the inefficiency is that it's very likely that WTI Brent in the prompt is dragging up WTI Brent down the curve. So now you can look at, you know, you're talking about deck June deck. Are there boxes, are there box flies, you know, like um, that have been dragged up to kind of unsustainable levels yeah. because of the prompt. And those ones are always interesting to try and fade. Um, you have to get, you have to have confidence in, in the trade, I guess, underlying fundamentally as well with, with a trade like that, in my opinion. And I think like you're saying with WTI over 90, you should, should be getting more production. Um, the exports are already kind of at their, at their max. Um, I, I understand everything you're saying. So as in, is there, yeah, is there a trade um, that's obvious because we've completely blown out of the range and people aren't concentrating on right, concentrating on it right now because it's not yeah. prompt enough. So let's say it's, uh, I haven't looked at the numbers, but let's say it's like, um, uh, something like Jan March WTI Brent box, you know, if that's overbought and that's way past the range, that will start to come into, um, okay, so it's already like pretty heavily backwardated. Mm. I think what Martha's just showing, uh, WTI Brent in the prompts about what, 260 and then in Feb it's all the way down to 350. Mm. But it's, you know, it's still, you know, it still might not be a bad trade because as soon as things start to unravel and start to clean up and we do get more of this demand structure we're potentially seeing, you know, there's the things that have been overbought obviously start to start to correct. So that's kind of an interesting one conceptually, but I guess I haven't done the work to know the actual numbers. Do you get what I'm saying? I, I do. I think it's on like a relative value basis. So similarly in the um, in the oil products market, so a lot of the, for example, like fuel oil, perhaps like 0.5 and the deferred is very much uh, uh, derived based on Brent spreads. So if Brent spreads uh, rally too high, then these back-end deferred spreads in the oil product markets, they'll be high on a, on a notional value basis. So mm. there's potential for, for those to correct down as well. Agreed. So brand spread plus product <clears throat> crack spread gives you a time spread, which is actually yeah. a physical differential. If that gets way too high, then on a notional basis is in like the physical diff basis. It's just like, it's just too high a number full stop. Right, That's why it's yeah. always dangerous to be buying cracks in a high flat price environment, mm -hmm. in a high Brent flat price environment there's a relative trade to Brent. So even though you might be bullish gasoline or bullish diesel, it's like, yeah, but as you said earlier, it's a function of Brent. Yeah. So is it better to buy Brent or is it better to buy the crack? And yeah. I think in this scenario, I think we're getting towards, if you really still believe in the bullishness of the market, you should be holding it still in Brent flat price. And my, my personal opinion is the best trade right now is, is moving into volatility trades. 
because I think as you, the more saturation, the whole world's priced in or starting to price in. And part of it, part, part of pricing in a bullish market is the headlines, $100 oil, $150 oil. Yeah. So get get ready for some volatility because it's at the extremes of this positioning and everyone's riling everyone up. So mm-hmm. maybe like um, buying call spreads, buying calls or just buying straddles to just get pure pure volatility um, exposure would be would be my take i think we'll leave it there that's uh thanks very much for that i think uh, i like the format of this one so we'll kind of stick to this and let us know if you agree and if you've got any questions uh thanks very much for listening see you later thank you